Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a look at ASRock's latest refresh on their X99 motherboards. This is the Tai Chi, which is essentially a cosmetically overhauled motherboard from ASRock coming in at a very aggressive price point. So let's have a look at the features and then I'll do some tests for you guys and give you my personal opinion on this board. So straight away getting straight into the cosmetics of this board which will probably be the first thing you guys have noticed they've gone with a black and white themed clockwork sort of steampunk look here and I must say they've paid very particular attention to detail here with even things like the input output shield having those same markings there and even the screw holes having those similar markings there as well. Now one thing I will say is kudos to ASRock for changing those clips there and making them the same color as the dim slots. So in terms of cosmetics I think this board is a real hit. So straight away getting into the power delivery, we've got a 12 phase design here with eight phases dedicated to the CPU and then two phases dedicated to each of those four DIMM slots on either side. Now there is a black heatsink with X99 branding covering that power delivery. And I noticed that in practice when I started overclocking with pretty aggressive overclocks on air, the VRM temps did get a little bit hot. I managed to get in after about two hours of running a benchmark there on the CPU at about 55 degrees. So a little on the high side, though just above that, you've got your eight pin connector and then to the side, you've got your 24 pin connector and in between there you've got your fan connectors now this board has a total of five different fan connectors there and one of them up the top there being dedicated to water pumps providing an additional two amps and 24 watts of power as opposed to the one amp 12 watt power for singular fans Moving down the board, you've got a USB front out, and then you've got 10 SATA connections there, and also an additional SATA Express connector. Moving on to the M.2 configurations, we've got two of those, one conveniently located in the middle of the board, and then one down the bottom right. Now, both these connectors will fit up to five different configurations of M.2 in different sizes. Then moving down the board there, you've got your Dr. Debug LED, as well as a COM port header, a TPM header, and as well as a power LED and speaker header, as well as your front audio out and also your front two USB ports there. There's also a BIOS selection switch down the bottom, which allows you to select between two different BIOSes if you had a bad update or if you just want to test out a new BIOS to see if it fixes your problems. Then moving on to the left side of the board there, we've got that armor there covering the Purity Sound 3, which is ASRock's implementation of the Realtek ALC 1150 audio codec. Now the good thing about this is they've put good amps on not only the audio out there, which is a Texture Instruments NE5532 headphone amplifier, but they've also put in a decent amp on the mic in. So I'll let you guys quickly listen to that. So here's a little test for you guys on the X99 Tai Chi mic in port here with a volume level of 50 at 20 dB boost here. This is my sweet spot generally for motherboard onboard audio. So you can tell the ASRock actually has a really decent mic in port. So if you were using it for streaming or whatnot, or even just want good clarity in games, then this mic in port is definitely going to deliver that. And the microphone I am using is the Vmoto Boom Pro. Crosstalk was also extremely low on this motherboard and also when I was listening to music with my V-Motor headphones, I noticed the separation was really good and is pretty much as good as it gets for onboard audio. And then glancing over the center of the motherboard there, we've got that clockwork theme as well as five PCI Express ports there, two of those being one speed and three of those being 16 speed. The 16 speed ports there, do have the steel reinforced armor as ASRock call it. I think it's more of a cosmetic thing as I've never busted a PCIe port due to savagery. And believe me, I'm a savage when it comes to handling PC parts. Though depending on your CPU and the PCIe lanes available there, you will be able to do either X16, X16 or X8, X8, X8. Then moving on to the side of the motherboard there, we've got two USB 2s, a PS2 port, and then below that you've got a dual band wireless there, which actually works really well in practice. Below that you've got your clear CMOS button, USB 3.1 A and C connectors, and then below that you've got an additional three USB 3 ports and an additional USB 2 port, all connected to those dual Intel NICs there, which are the 218Vs, and then below that you've got your 7.1 audio HD connections there, which also has an optical out. So let's take a look at what I like and don't like about the Tai Chi. Now moving straight into the BIOS, I will give kudos here to ASRock for bringing that clockwork theme into the BIOS and also having a simple setup there if you're new to overclocking. You can lock in an easy overclock, you've got all your settings on one page. So if you hit F6, you change to advanced mode where this is what I'm used to and you've just got all your settings there. You can tweak voltages, change different overclocks, change the PCI Express to the B clock, clock ratio there and you can even update the BIOS itself within the uh, BIOS. If you just have an internet connection from a router, it'll download the firmware and then it'll do all the rest for you. And then you've also got the fantastic tuner there, which allows you to tweak all your different fans that are connected to the motherboard and change the speeds of those if they are TPM connections there. 
So how about the actual overclocks that this motherboard was able to obtain? Well, with my 5820K, I had the Extreme 6 previously here. That got 4.5 gigahertz. This was no different. It scored another 4.5 gigahertz overclock stable there. So very good motherboard for overclocking. Pretty solid, though, as I mentioned before, those VRM temperatures were a little bit higher, especially for 24-7 use. And this was in a 25 degree uh, controlled environment here. Also, as I said before, those crosstalk levels and the mic in on the sound there is really good. And then you've got those dual Intel NICs, which work really well in practice. And then besides that, you've really got not a lot to not like about this motherboard. But also other things here, you've just got so much expandability on this motherboard. And I think it comes in at $219. So the only graph that I had with this motherboard was that it was missing a power button, which I'm kind of used to since I use it in a lot of test bed scenario setups. So I'd like to see them add that, though it really isn't a big uh, winning and losing point of this motherboard since a lot of people are going to be putting these in cases. And I will say the cosmetics is an absolute uh, hit out of the park here. I love what ASRock have done with this motherboard, and I believe it is coming in at 219 US MSRP, which is incredible considering the feature set you're getting on this motherboard, as well as the fact that they've added in things like wireless, and they haven't gone with fancy RGB LEDs and making you guys pay for it while skimping on things like sound. Sound. So in so, conclusion, ASRock are just getting it right. They're hitting home runs when it comes to motherboards nowadays. They know what people want, and that is a really solid motherboard. Also, one thing I forgot to mention was the motherboard itself actually feels really damn solid and really sturdy. I think they've gone with an eight layer PCB design here. So very good job with ASRock and I can highly recommend this motherboard for someone looking for not only sort of the best motherboard and ease of use out there, but also someone looking for the best value for money. So anyway guys, that's about it for me. If you like this video, then be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about the ASRock Taichi, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, this thing is definitely going to be making its way into a build very soon. And also I was provided this as a review sample from ASRock. If there is any ambiguity in the air out there, then I hope that clears it up. Anyway guys, hope to see you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.